Just a few videos ago, I promised you a showdown of this painting here. This is Mission Gold watercolor, and we are going neck to neck today with core watercolor. So stay tuned and find out what happens. I know I initially said that I would only be doing core versus Mission Gold, but I figured why not do my Windsor and Newton as well, because they are also professional quality, supposedly. And why not put all three of them to the test? I have room on the paper. I did these in six by six squares. They'll be cut at six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So they will go in a really nice eight by eight frame when I'm all done. Hopefully they're all worthy of framing. We will have Core, Mission Gold, and Windsor and Newton all in one video. Let's pit them against each other and see what we think. This is on my Arches Cold Press 140 pound 16 by 20 block. In this video you saw where my 18 by 24 block fell apart. Well all I did on this one was pick it up to get it off the desk and it came apart right there. So I don't know if these are old blocks that I received from Jerry's Artorama or if all the big blocks do that, but if you are going for bigger pieces of watercolor paper, maybe just get them separately or in a pad because I'm not having any good luck with them. I do still have my rubber cement, but I have not tried putting them back together yet, but we will do that eventually. I have all the space up here at the top and because I wanted to leave this on this watercolor block, I will just cover that to protect it so that I can use it for other drawings, paintings, and whatnot. I figure I could do a bunch of cute little 4x4s or something with the leftover paper, but I want to leave this on the block for now because so far the top of this block is still intact. So we will just protect it and use it as it sits. There are a lot of things that I learned from doing this painting. I want to keep the color in the dog way warmer. In this one I intentionally put some of the hooker's green into the color of the dog's face itself because I wanted to bring the green from the background into the animal, but it definitely cooled it down a little bit too much. And so this one I'm going to keep more pure color, more pure burnt sienna. There's a couple of lighter red places I'd like to keep. I'll do the background more stylized and add a little bit different color in the shadows here as well. So I did learn a lot from this painting. It's definitely not a waste and I do like how it turned out still. Some of the masking still looks a little awkward and I still haven't fixed that top head corner right there. That's what these paintings are for is to get this all straightened out. And of course, Battle of the Watercolors. Who could forget that? All right, this is my setup. It's kind of crazy, but I labeled these for you guys. So if the camera's on them, you'll always know which one I'm working on. And the idea is to do the same thing on each painting. For example, if I am going to start the background, I will do it with this one real quick and this one real quick and this one real quick so that I don't have that added experience that will just aid in making each one better and better. I want them to all be the same level of experience and so on. I'm using distilled water this time instead of my tap water just to see if that makes any difference. I remembered I do have one more professional grade watercolor and that's the Roman small but we're just doing these three because I only have those five colors in that one and it would probably be fine but we're just doing these three. Okay. <sighs> I am so so nervous. I'm trying to find my brush. I'm going to use my Windsor & Newton Cotman size 12. Remember with the Mission Gold, I only have the one green and that's Hooker's Green. Kind of a dry brush there. Yeah, I like that. Get some more yellow. Okay, we're gonna let that one dry. Moving on to core. So for core, I just have one green as well. That's the sap green, and their sap green's really dark, at least on this swatch. That'll be fun. Here's their sap green. Oh wow. I mean, obviously, sap green and hooker's green are not the same green. I knew they would be different, but it's kind of interesting. All right, I have two yellows. I'm gonna do this really light one. And I definitely want this sap green darker. So there's nothing that says I can't mix colors here. That's the whole idea. We're working with three limited palettes. The Mission Gold has the 11 colors, the Core has 12 colors, and my Windsor & Newton has 13. But if you remember in the last video where I did this dog, I only used six colors anyway. So these are like little tiny areas and I'm still just using the same paintbrush. I tend to do that all the time. All right, I'm gonna add a little burnt umber. Oh, that's so pretty. Love it. Should lighten that one up. Maybe I will. See, I'm trying to work these somewhat evenly. That one will create a bloom. My brush was way too wet and it's off screen. Anyways, bloom. 
That bloom could be really pretty, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. But it's kind of interesting that these are not going to look anything close to the same. And you can add some more colors and get them closer to the same. And I stuck my pinky in it and got it on his head, so this version is kind of just foiled. <laughs> On to Windsor and Newton before I forget what the heck I'll be doing here. I have two greens in this set. I have the Viridian and the Permanent Tap Green. Feels like it's been forever since I've used these paints. I have used them in a video not too long ago on the channel, but for some reason it's not coming to me when that was. All right, so their sap green's really light. It kind of reminds me of what the Mission Gold one was like. They're not uh, re-wetting as quickly as the other two, so should have sprayed them first. I don't know if this is a fair comparison without exactly the same colors or not, but it sure is fun. Something I've kind of wondered about these paints because they say that they are professional grade, but I kind of wondered if they maybe were more their student line, but there's nothing on them that says Cotman or anything like that. It's good that I'm actually using these at the same time side by side because when you put one set of paints away and you get out another set you don't often remember because it's separate days maybe separate weeks even you don't often remember what the other painting session was really like doing this like this is actually really cool this is what we have so far one thing i really am liking though i guess i can say something there's two things i'm liking this here that's really neat the way the paint fingered out right there. And then I really like this section in the core one. The Windsor and Newton one is still too wet to really say much about, but I like the little yellow that I put there, although that might be a little much. This is the core one, and I forgot about where I put my knuckle in there. So this is just a little round scrubber. And see if we can pull a little bit of that color up without completely destroying the paper. It's a dark spot on the dog's head right there, so I'm not too concerned about it, but that's probably good enough right there. They have all dried right now, and remember, I didn't have exactly the same colors in each set, so don't compare the colors. We're just comparing how it's going to end overall. And one thing that is interesting here is remember when I drop that water in, I'm like, oh, that's way too much water. This is a perfect example of how when you put in water, it pushes the pigment away to the edges. And so you get that nice dark edge. That's really nice if that's what you're wanting. <laughs> but when you're not wanting it, that's why it happens. So I'm going to leave that for now. We'll go back in with darker colors anyway, later on that one. For now, I wanna get the light pinks in around the mouth and the eyes and a little bit there. I'm going to try and go in with a much more aggressive layer at first and add some darks on top. Hopefully not nearly as many layers as this guy. Thinking maybe I'll do the eyes first. Let me grab some masking fluid and mask those eyes off though because I meant to do that first thing this morning. This is the PBO drawing gum. So I'm just gonna cover up the highlights in the eyes here. I'm really good at sticking my hands in these. Burnt sienna time. One thing that worked against me in the other painting, the original painting, was that I had wet the paper front and back in order to keep it flat on my surface. And when you do that, obviously you're already diluting the paint right from the start. This time I wanted the paint to be very undiluted, so I am working on dry paper. That's where I put my hand on it again. Really bad at that. So I get to fix that now, that's always fun. And these ears just give me trouble every time. I just can't keep that one light section light enough and it just is so difficult for me. And here I switch to core and these are so nice to work with. They rewet really easily as do the Mission Gold and you can see how vibrant that burnt sienna is. And once again, I'm trying to keep that light section in the ear really light with this version. <laughs> but I end up getting it a little too light and I have to go back and fix that later. So one thing I have done is not make that chin area dark enough, so I was trying to make sure I got some good color in there and then dark enough shadows under that paw. 
Switching over to the Winsor & Newton, I felt like I had really great color choices with the 13 choices. I still only used a few, even so, and the color looked nice. I had a heck of a time re-wetting it, and I'll talk about that even more later. It just was difficult and frustrating, so. And in the beginning, I said how I wanted to keep the layers pretty minimal by putting in a more vibrant burnt sienna in the beginning, and I tried to do that, but I still ended up having to layer a lot just to get those creases and folds in the dog's fur, and I don't think that it affected the picture at all. You just have to make sure the layer below is dry before the pigments all mix together and kind of create mud. Okay, I desperately need a break at this point. So we're like midway through and in my opinion I am having the hardest time with the Windsor & Newton paints. They just aren't behaving for me. I have a feeling I'm going to be layering just as much as I did with this guy, but oh well, that's okay. This was an experiment. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna do the eyes before I take a break because why not? Okay, eyes. This is kind of funny because it used to drive me crazy when I would watch other artists and they would just leave the eyes blank, but now that I'm actually painting things with eyes, I'm like, oh yeah, because I just wanna do some of the other parts first. It's funny because yeah, it would drive me crazy. I'm like, just do the eyes already, and I didn't. Okay, I'll finish the other eye later. Just too tired, getting sloppy. When I came back to finish the Windsor & Newton dog eyes, I saw a few things on the others that I wanted to touch up, so I grabbed those paints and did that, and then I came back to this Windsor & Newton and put his eyes in and got distracted by the nose because I had that dark color on my brush, and I'm like, oh, nose. The nose is dark, so yes, let's do the nose. <laughs> anyway, when I had that dark color on my brush, I went ahead and just put in a bunch of darks too, and so that was really fun because you really start to see it come together when you start filling in all the blanks. And even though I'm not showing it on this video, every time I switched to the different dog, I absolutely did use the right paint. I made sure of it every single time. So when I switch to the Mission Gold, I'm taking it out of my Mission Gold palette. Same with Core and same with Windsor & Newton. So the paints are only the right ones. I never made a mistake as far as I know. As far as the speed of this video, just to put this into perspective, I have this sped up by 5,000% so you can imagine how much time it actually took. I was really surprised though when I added up all the footage of just the painting time. It was only three and a half hours to do all three dogs and it felt like it was about six or seven hours. So it's always interesting when I go back and add that up. I always feel like maybe my best painting time is around an hour. I guess Get a little bit tired after that and need a break but on this painting I really wanted to see what the dogs would look like when they were finished so I pushed through after that main burnt sienna layer was put down I just wanted to get all of that detail all the wrinkles and creases in all of them at the same time so I did kind of just sit and go through this for several hours and so I did get a little tired I wonder if that maybe affected the outcome but I'm not sure I I tried my best not to you know be too tired doing this and I still like them all. They're just different. They're all different than each other. At this point, I feel like maybe they are finally done and I peel off the tape. It's such a good feeling, I can tell you that right now. Thought I had this on video, but I didn't. I just now put a layer of burnt sienna over that ear because it was just sticking out a little too much in my opinion. Here they are all done. <laughs> what a relief. That was actually really hard and kind of frustrating. Doing such fine detail and supposed realism this long was not something that I fully enjoyed, but it was really cool to use all the different paints all at the same time because I could really tell what was what. 
there's the original and I think and I even kind of realized this later what I probably could just do that would make me like this one better is just put a whole wash of burnt sienna over the top of it but that's okay it was a really fun test uh, at least it's fun now that it's over <laughs> this one just has a lot more burnt sienna so these two are the same the exact same paint and if you're wondering about whiskers and stuff I did try them on this one with a bunch of different tints of paint acrylic gouache gouache white and I just kept rubbing them off they just didn't look right now that I'm looking at them now it looks a little better and I probably should add whiskers to these guys but at the time it just uh, it didn't seem okay it didn't seem like it was looking okay so which one is your favorite here's the mission gold and as far as the mission gold paint itself goes it was so fun to work with this was really easy to rewet the paint was so so easy to use. You can see the colors are really beautiful and I just didn't put enough burnt sienna on this one I think. You know when I was looking at this one straight on it seemed like the background was kind of washed out but it's kind of like the more it sits the more vibrant it gets so it's obviously just a me thing. <laughs> But that's okay, you know, whatever. Mission Gold, A-OK, -okay. loved it. Core, now look at this one. This one is gorgeously transparent, okay? So I ended up, even though I did these all at the same time, you probably saw I would put the color in on this one and I just was getting it too wet every single time. But ironically enough, I actually like how the wrinkles in the nose on this dog are a little bit more faded or spread out or blurred out compared to this one because Core, I don't know if you kind of noticed as I was doing that, but I would put it on the paper and it would like dry and stain immediately. And this one with the Mission Gold, I just had, it felt like I had a lot more working time. So these are much harsher lines. They didn't blend out as well, but it's just gorgeous color, beautiful transparency. They rewet really easily as well. They were never hard to work with and I love the result. So it's, it's a cutie pie. <laughs> The dog's a cutie pie to start with, so we have that going for it too. Okay, Windsor and Newton. <laughs> Every time I would go to use this paint, I would get so frustrated. It did not re-wet. I even sprayed it with a spray bottle before I even started painting with it by a couple of minutes, and I still just had so much trouble getting it out of the pan. So maybe if I used it straight from the tubes, I would have better luck, but boy, if the paint I have is the right kind of Windsor & Newton paint, I don't recommend drying it out in a palette. I think you should just use it straight from the tube every single time. It turned out pretty. It, it's nice enough. The colors themselves acted on the paper like I expected them to. I really love the background on this one. Real pretty. But working with those paints, I would just dread every time I switched over to this one. So that was just awful. For those of you that know about Windsor & Newton paint, take a look at this and tell me what I have. So I have a Series 3A, so I know that's more expensive. Artist watercolor, so it doesn't say Cotman, it doesn't say student, and I've tried to look these up and supposedly they're professional grade, but I don't know. Or is it just because you aren't supposed to dry these out? Okay, this is a single pigment color here, and that's is how they all look. Maybe you can help me out and tell me why I had so much frustration with them. Here are the three. Which one is your favorite? Which one do you like best? I'll give you a different angle here in just a second as well. All right, I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as I can. There's the Mission Gold. There's the core. It's beautiful, bright, transparent. And the Windsor & Newton is also really pretty. Just didn't like working with the paint. Which one do you guys like? You gotta vote down in the comments because they're taking polls out of the eye cards. Windsor & Newton. Core. Mission Gold. And I guess we could put the old Mission Gold one in there. Why not? Wow, what a lot of work and time went into this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like videos like this and the others on my channel, consider subscribing. I would love to have you join our team here. Thank you to all my existing subscribers. You guys are awesome and amazing. And if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button down below because it actually helps me out. I don't know if you knew that, but it helps my video reach other people. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in another video in a couple of days. Have a great day week. Awkward angles here. <laughs> oh, foiled. Ah, oh, the air conditioner's on. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're ready. <laughs> Painting right here with something.
Hello, handsome. I'm so excited for this one. Wait, wait, wait. Lights, 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 better lights. Just a few short videos ago, video down of this painting, redone again. Why'd I look away? And I told you we'd pit them. Crap. Gold next door to next to neck to neck, neck to neck. Is that right? I don't know. I promised you a redo of this cutie pie right here with 